I call Maureen Pugh. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And it is my pleasure too to stand here in support of the films, videos, and publications classification interim restriction order classification amendment bill. Um, this bill, as we know, Mr. Speaker, is a private member's bill in the name of Chris Bishop, National List MP based in the mighty Hutt Valley. This bill has, uh, it has been considered by the Justice and Electoral Select Committee and our decisions were informed by the four submissions that we received and two of those were supported by oral submissions. Mr Speaker, I'm a, personally a, a lover of books and in my former role I would spend a lot of time visiting schools around my district and promote reading and books to the students. And one of my favourite sayings that I would share is, you may have tangible wealth untold, caskets of jewels and coffers of gold, but richer than I you can never be, for I had a mother who read to me. Wow. And this was, um, this was something that I promoted around, around the schools and in the audiences that I talked to about reading, Mr Speaker, because reading is a fundamental part of our freedom of expression. I've also actively supported and advocated for our own Hokitika Library back in Westland. And actually, with my council's support, we built a brand new library, so much so that we'd supported the access to books. And this enlivened our community libraries as well. As a member of the local government New Zealand board, I was the contact person for the Association of Public Library Managers and was even invited to speak at one of their annual conferences. I was recently visiting Grey Main School, which is quite a big school in Greymouth on the West Coast, and I was delighted when I came into the playground and was um, confronted by the big double doors that go into their school's library. And the very wise words of one of the most famous doctors was emblazoned on the doors. And Dr. Seuss had said, the more that you read, the more things you will know, the more that you learn, the more places you'll go. Access to books uh, and to knowledge is a fundamental part, sir, of our freedom of expression. And I'm not sure how anyone in this house even finds time to read books now with the other reading that we have to do, especially in preparation for our select committee, sir. Um, but I have, uh, I have discovered audiobooks, and uh, I've got to say, with the amount of driving that I do around my electric, they are an absolute godsend. But I thank uh, the committee at this stage for the work that was done on this bill. Um, I thank, of course, Chris Bishop for bringing it to our attention. And one of the things that I've noticed about being quite a new member of the government is the absolute amazing support that we get in our select committees from the clerks and in this particular committee from the advisers from justice and our collegial friends across the house. But sir, to go back to the bill, um, the need for this bill came about when on 11th of September in 2013, the book Into the River by Ted Dore received a classification by the classifications office as M, meaning it was unrestricted. But it came with a note saying that it contains sex scenes, offensive language and drug use. The classification for this book was challenged in December of 2013 and an application was made to the Film and Literature Board of Review and they asked for a reclassification for this book and it was reclassified as R14 at that stage, which was a unique classification at the time um, because it had not been assigned in this country prior to that. But there was growing dissatisfaction among the, the public, especially uh, from librarians and teachers, about the restricted access that they placed on this book. And it was actually, actually the Auckland librarians that requested that the decision be reconsidered. And as a consequence, 
the book was again reclassified in August of 2015, and the book was again made unrestricted. Another challenge was made, and this time asking the Board of the Film and Literature Board of Review to exercise their power under Section 49 of the Films, Videos and Publications Act of, of 1993 to impose an interim restriction order on the book. Now, this was the first time that we had had an interim restriction order in New Zealand, um, so it was breaking new ground. The President duly did grant that order, and which effectively banned the book from supply or display. And that meant that every book in every bookshop shelf had to be removed, and also had to be removed from school libraries. And when the board did meet, the majority view was uh, to um, reclassify the book as unrestricted um, because they had been asked again to have another look at this book and its classification. Um, and that happened in October of 2015. So, Mr Speaker, this demonstrates the inflexibility of the current law in that, that the book could only be banned or be made unrestricted. And so this bill provides for allowing classifications which could uh, restrict the publication based on certain things like age or classes of people, such as um, school, high school students or mature, mature audiences or an age restriction like R14. Um, so this simple amendment uh, gives the President of the Film and Literature Board of Review a couple of practical tools uh, to add to his toolkit, toolkit so that common sense can prevail, sir, and thereby avoiding the messy situation that found the book into the river, completely banned for six weeks. In his submission to the Select Committee, the Chief Censor actually stated that this, had this proposed amendment been in place in August 2015, the President could have actually issued a more nuanced interim restriction order and allowed the book to remain in circulation. And this would have meant that some people at least could have still had access to the book while the interim restriction was in place. And that would have reflected the uh, consistency with our right to freedom of expression. Mr Speaker, we heard um, at the Select Committee hearings that 92% of New Zealanders value the classifications that are applied to entertainment media when choosing for our children um, and teens. And it can be assumed that Kiwis would have value in the same classifications being applied to books so that appropriate material can be bought or borrowed for our young people's reading pleasure. It's an important aspect in shielding our vulnerable readers from harm. We also heard that there is a high level of trust and reliance on the classification labels from our submitters. Mr Speaker, this bill helps protect New Zealanders from harm by providing a consi consistent information from a trusted and independent source, and it enables consumers to make informed choices about what they read. I congratulate Chris Bishop on his initiative in recognising the need to tidy up the Act, and I have great pleasure in commending this bill to the House. Uh, call Barry Coates.